Hundreds of major leaguers have started their career right here at the East Cobb Baseball Complex. More importantly, hundreds of thousands of young athletes have created memories that will always be etched in their mind as they grow their love for baseball. It's our Game of the Week from East Cobb, just outside of Atlanta. It's an incredible day at East Cobb as they play Major League and college baseball around the country. We focus on the 14U age group for our game of the week. It's the Georgia Jackets, not too far from here. They're out of Milton, Georgia, and the Canes national team. Their 14U team that they bring to the forefront, a talented and gifted team. It's going to be a fun matchup. Hi there, folks. My name is Darren Sutton. Really glad you found us. We have learned to love this, this property, if you will, of, of bringing the game of the week to you, understanding the very most passionate and gifted 13 and 14 new players around the country. And this week is no exception. Let's take a peek at the team out of Milton, Georgia. They play and work at a, at a great spot called the barn. There's multiple barns with tons of work going on. Their head coach, Nick Markakis of the Georgia Jackets. Yes, that Nick Markakis of the, of the three gold gloves of the nearly 2,500 hits. And let's talk about a couple of players on that team. First up is a, is a familiar name, understandably so. Taylor Markakis out of Kings Ridge Christian. He dreams of Vandy. Nick's son is a Cedric Mullins fan. And what we've seen in our 93 perfect game games is a 545 on base percentage, the outfielder with 50 stolen bases. And there's a bit of a national feel to this team because of Amari Reynolds. Amari is from Gresham, Oregon, and his 44 PG games. 508 on base, 19 walks, 41 hits, incredibly patient. William Antelia making the great sacrifice to get him there. A young man out of Oregon. He loves Jazz Chisholm. Now when we talk about the Canes national team, we want to talk about Adam Mosley, who is their head coach, one of the great high school coaches in the nation at Hoover High School. But focusing on a couple of his athletes, we start with Jordan Griffin. Twice we've seen him at a perfect game select festival. He got ahead of the new recruiting rules. He's an LSU commit. His dad, Ricardo, played football at ASU. The metrics are crazy everywhere. He's at Barb High School with the legendary coach, Glenn Caccini. Going to have fun watching Jordan Griffin as well as Aiden Salinas. He's from Texas. He's committed to Miami. His dad played college baseball at Texas. His dad was a nine-year pro when we watched what Trey did. But Aiden, again, playing on a bigger, bigger ballpark and bigger fields in 2023. Just two years removed from the smaller diamonds, five home runs over the big boards. It's going to be an incredible matchup of these talented players. And with that in mind, we hope, we hope you feel like you're ready for this matchup. Let's get it on out to Brett Dolan and Jeremy Brown. They have all the action. Guys, this will be fun. Take it away. Ah, uh, the historic East Cobb Baseball Complex in Marietta, Georgia. Time for the perfect game. Game of the week between the Georgia Jackets and the Canes. 14U national team, Brett Dolan, Jeremy Brown. Delighted to have you with us at an overcast and maybe even cool day in Marietta at 72 degrees. The Jackets will be the visiting team in our game of the week. Let's take a look at the starting lineup. Talked about Taylor Markakis in the open. There he is leading off. Then Bowman. Reynolds, Bullard, Carter, Glaze. We'll talk more about him. Wine, Taylor, and Faberkevich. Also, Puckett and Says. They will bat 11 players, will the Jackets. So it'll have a little different feel to it over the course of this seven inning game. But there is the starting lineup for the Jackets. And now the Canes in the field will also get our chance to take a look at their starting pitcher, Finn Moore. And Jeremy, last week we saw pitchers going about two or three innings, but we saw a lot of good stuff last week. Absolutely. And I, I really think we're going to see more of the same. You know, Finn Moore starting from Kansas. So already getting that national feel with the Canes. And the reason why I think we're going to get that is because you have so many ranked players, but there's only so many games to play. So I think the Canes are going to keep these arms fresh. They have top to bottom, just talent, talent, talent. And I'm excited to see who they're bringing to the table after Finn Moore. Though I really want to see what Finn Moore brings, too, so I'm excited. Yeah, the number one player ranked by Perfect Game in the state of Kansas. He's a state championship wrestler. He might have that, that builder mentality, but excited to see Finn Moore. Also talked about the Markakis the family. There's Nick Markakis. What a career between the Baltimore Orioles and Atlanta Braves. And, Jeremy, maybe it's fitting that those two teams are going head-to-head -head this week. It's the weekend of Mark Kekas with his former teams. 
right? It, it's, it's, it becomes a small world, and I'm just, I'm here for it. I'm ready to see what we got, and I know things are going to kick off up, real boys? quick, so let's see what we got. Well, this is Taylor, his son, stepping in to begin things. Lean and lanky, tooled up outfielder. And Finmore ready. The first pitch of our game is strike one call. Fill it up. Fill the bucket. Marcakis has been described as a freak of nature. He has all the tools. Very upright stance. Deep in the batter's box. That pitch was yanked outside from Finmore. Got a kick out of Finmore. We ask these players in 10 years where they're going to be, and we tell them to be creative. He says he's going to be pitching for the Rays. Living on the beach, driving a Bronco, and he's going to have hired help to do his laundry and to cook for him. So I want to be Finn Moore in 10 years. I want to be Finn Moore right now. Uh, good How point. do I sign up? Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Finn Moore's coming out here. He's 82, 83 so far with the fastballs. And you see Marcakis just standing in there. Like, you'd think this type of velo at this age might be, like, not something they're used to seeing. But I think that really speaks to the growth of the 14 new level and the type of talent these kids not only possess themselves, but are facing on a week to week process as well. It's ball four. That'll be a common theme really throughout our game and the perfect game games of the week. These are 2027s. There's a few 26s. You have a regional. This is David Bowman. He's one of the extra hitters. One of the 11. Okay, deep breath. Settle down. You got it. Deep breath. You saw Finn Moore there try to switch it up and just go breaking ball. Can't locate the fastball right now. He's got to just get a handle for it. But that really short arm action, strong physical body. The way the ball's coming out, the moment he finds it, starts pumping the zone, I think he's going to be one of the arms here that we see today who's going to be really hard to square up once he gets his release point. Moore goes up on the fastball there, gets the, bring the count back 3-2. Out of the stretch, he's still sitting here 81-82. Marcakis advanced up to second on that wild pitch earlier in the at-bat. So you got Bowen, the two-hole hitter, looking to get the Jackets on the board early in a pivotal matchup here against the Canes national team. <laughs> Bowen staying alive, following back a fastball there, 82 miles per hour out of the hand of Finn Moore. And Finn Moore, somebody who we've seen before, he's ranked 103rd in the country, primary right-hander out of Lawrence, Kansas. Um, one I've been told a lot about, and one that I'm personally excited to watch as the season progresses. Bowen just not giving in at all. David Bowen, primary third baseman out of Milton, Georgia, 2027. You see a lot of 2027s. We saw it with Motor City last week. They didn't have a lot of their 26s because they are in school ball. But with the Georgia Jackets now being more local, if their high school teams are still in it, their players are able to come in. Got a couple extra at-bats this weekend as Bowen draws ball, Bowman draws ball four there, first and second. Now two walks from Finn Moore. But, again, once he finds it, his stuff is more than good enough to collect outs in a hurry. Get yourself out of it. Here we go. Hey, 
quick little mountain visit here. Kind of just tell Finn to calm down the nerves, you know, knowing this game isn't on TV. Just scattering it a little bit, but that arm action, the athleticism, as I keep saying, as it all comes in, I think we're going to be okay here with them. They got somebody down warming up in the bullpen, I think I heard. The Canes National do. But two, two on, no outs for the Georgia Jackets with three-hole hitter coming up. Amari Reynolds. You see there, Gresham, Oregon, you go back in his profile a couple of years. You would see that he was a Georgia resident, so he's kind of keeping true to his roots here, coming back to play for the Georgia Jackets again this summer. Moore gets ahead there with a fastball first pitch, and... Reynolds is somebody we saw last year at the 13 New National Showcase and the athleticism, the bat speed, and he checked a lot of boxes that you want to see. I know he's going to be coming back out for this year's 14 New National Showcase. And you see him there from the side. He's, he's one of your stronger 14 new players, not only in the Georgia Jackets lineup, but that you're going to find on the field. Yeah, now you've got more going up 0-2. Like we said, once he finds it, I think you're going to get a lot of strikes in a hurry. Once he finds it, I think you're going to get a lot of strikes in a hurry. Found the fastball to get ahead. That allows the breaking ball to be unlocked there as well as he lands a 69-mile-per-hour curveball for called second strike. Good pitch there from Moore. Good job there by Reynolds as well to get the barrel out on a outer half pitch. Doesn't try to do too much. Puts it in play. Advances a runner and reaches first base on his own. They didn't fully turn it up the middle. They did get the force out at second base, however, for a pivotal first out. Still keeps a double play in place as we move on down to the four-hole hitter here for the Georgia Jackets. Roshad and Bullard dips out of the way of a breaking ball there. Six foot. He looks a lot longer in the box already, but he's coming up to the plate there. You see it at 2026, 20, able to come on over from school ball, get some reps in this weekend with the summer team, start meshing with the guys he's going to play with all summer. Got a runner here. Reynolds is safe, dives in head first, puts it back to second and third, only one out. Bullard coming to the plate, looking to do some damage. We got a good look there of C.J. Wall behind the plate. The catch and throw skills, it's something we saw last summer. And once you see him at the plate, he's going to make sure you don't forget his name with his left-handed swing. It's, it's a lot of barrel, and we saw it a lot last summer. Ball gets away, and like that, Jackets are up one nothing. Throw brings in a second run, so just a quick reset now. Jackets up 2-0, nobody on. We're going to go back to work right now. So we've seen more now, 80, 79, 82 on the fastball. And something we've seen a lot of was earlier throughout these games of the week is good approaches by the teams, by the teams hitting, not readily expanding the strike zone. And that's something, again, we're seeing here. They're making Finn Moore come to them, the Georgia Jackets hitters, that is. We still got Bullard up, full count, one out. Hey, I'm back. You thought you could keep me away. Yeah, I'm glad you're back. What have I missed, Jeremy? You made your, other than your play-by-play -play debut. Ooh, yeah, that was, we, we got there. A couple, uh, we got a bullpen here, going to the pen. 
80, 79, 83 with Finn Moore, but he just couldn't find his release point today, and Georgia Jackets have been patient. Looks like Diaz coming on to pitch. So a couple of runs here in the top of the first for the Jackets. Now we're going to see a left-hander. Last week we had a relatively clean game. Pitchers went two, sometimes three, if not more innings, but it might have a little different feel here this afternoon. So they got they got more out there out of the game pretty early, couldn't just find it, but I also think there's a chance that he will now come back later on in this tournament as well, giving them another arm, some depth should they make another should they make a run like we kind of are accustomed to Kane's making. So. To a point, we touched on that last week and the fact that this is the game of the week within a larger event. So there is some pitcher allocation, there's some strategy that comes into play over the Absolutely. course of this entire weekend. But Yariel Diaz is the new pitcher. So watching him warm up for the Canes here in the top of the first with a couple of runs home from the Jackets. So Diaz we see here, Yariel, he's actually 13 new eligible. He's young. He's really young. He's only 13 years old in two months. So he's playing up a year right now. You see that on your roster. He's a 20, draft. And he's already been up to 82 this year. So he's playing up a year. He's been up to 82. You saw the mechanics there warming up from the side to side profile and how the arm already shows that it works. He's got 49 strikeouts in 26 innings already. So pretty impressive stuff. This is Ty Carter. He's the right fielder. So a couple of runs in the bank already. Another upright stance, hands held high for Carter. And he's going to chop one to the right side. Fielded by Dubron. Flips to second for an out. Back to first. How about that? A double play. That's exactly what so you're looking Carter. for. And Diaz went and got what they needed. But that 4-6-3 double play will end the top of the first. So Diaz does exactly the job he was called upon to do. Meanwhile, we're going to hear from the general manager of Canes Baseball, Dan Glitzen, talking about his 14U program. You know, our fundamental goals have always been to create really good baseball players by putting them in really good baseball environments that they understand and they can develop in. Um, we feel like there shouldn't be type A baseball experience, type B baseball experience. It should be an all-encompassing baseball experience. And I think we see that really as it starts, coincidentally here at the 14-year-old age group where you see the practices, you see the development, you see the high-level coaches, you see the emphasis on real baseball, having first and third plays, bunt defenses, a running game uh, philosophy that we hammer down into because that's what these kids understand. They don't understand, uh, let's just get a group of kids together from all over the country and not get any better. Let's just stay out of their way and not help them to get better because these kids' goals are to be big league baseball players. Jeremy, we talk about the advanced approach for these young men, many of those 2027s, and certainly the talent level. And sometimes you wonder how they can develop that. What well, comes from this understanding for some of these organizations, the coaches they put around these players, exactly what they want to do to train and play and how they want to get them better over the course of several months. Yeah, so you're dealing with some of the best players, right, on some of these national type teams, even these local teams, because they've been together and they got that uh, training. But as you've heard so many times, like talent's only going to take you so far. You got to do that refining. You got to have that IQ and the internal clock and, and the knowledge when you're at the plate, like, all right, what's this pitcher thinking? What what have they done? What are they going to do? So there's so much more of the nuances that you have to put into perspective. And I think that's what you're getting with some of these travel teams doing for their programs. This is Jordan Griffin leading off an LSU committee. He's facing Amari Reynolds, the young man from Oregon. Does a lot of traveling over his spring and his summer. 
With some bat speed, that ball blistered to center, a little drop on the carpet for a base hit, and Jordan Griffin starts the Canes first inning with a sharp single to center. So that's basically what Jordan Griffin does. Like, you see him just sit back on a breaking ball, doesn't try to do too much. His hands are as whippy as they come at this age and finds a barrel, lines it to the center field, and just like that, the Canes got something brewing already. So that's what Jordan Griffin does, who he is, and what we've seen. Now he's going to try steal second base, and he's in there. So Griffin wastes a little time as Aiden Salina steps in the box. You took a look at the Canes lineup. Adam Mosley from Hoover High School, the head coach. He has Salinas batting second. He has a Miami commit, the shortstop on this squad. Reynolds will feature a fastball slider curve and change as Salinas puts one in the air. I believe that ball is, is caught for the first out. Like Faber Kevich was back there to make the play. We spoke about it last week. Um, Aiden Salinas did get his commitment in just before that wire. I know we're going to have a couple segments coming up on that as well with the whole recruiting process. Salinas did get it in before that 26th cutoff where Gordon Griffin had his commitment kind of settled before. You guys can't see this. We're audio, obviously, only. But behind me is all my live commitments. And Jordan jumped on and announced his LSU commitment with us over on PG's Instagram Live. And there's a few of these young men that got in and got those commitments before the new rules. This is Tanner Williams, the left fielder, lifting one in the air towards left. That is size. He was able to make the catch and throws back to second. Griffin had to use that speed just to get back to second base and not get doubled off. Griffin's already run a mile, and we're in the bottom of the first, uh, swiping <laughs> second. He, he stole third there. Then he had to backtrack to second. So he's already done a lap around the field, and – Ultimately retreats just in time. Bring him around, kid. Bring him around. Brings up Jose Dubrant. He is the second baseman. Started that double play that ended the top of the first. Got to move back to second, and Griffin will have to do a little more running or diving this time as mm -hmm. he's back in there. Reynolds sitting right around 78 miles per hour with his fastball, and Dubrant's a Georgia native, so or South Carolina, excuse me, but he plays with the East Cobb program a lot. So playing on field one here in the East Cobb complex is just another weekend for Dubron. Who Second has home a, for Jose Dubron. Basically. Might be a first home, really, with how much he's be. played. At this time at of year, you might be right. Double of runs for the Jackets in the top of the first. Kane's trying to answer, but now batting with two outs, and that ball skips by Puckett. That was a tough pitch to handle, and Griffin will be able to try to advance over to third base. Yeah, Reynolds just pulled that breaking ball down a little bit too much, spiked it, and with the spin he's able to create, the moment it hit that turf, it took off on Puckett, and now now uh, Griffin can jog a little easier into third base. Dubrant really spreads out wide in that big batter's box. A chopper to third. Bullard's got it. His throw is low, but it was picked by Glaze. Nice job to end the inning. So despite... That leadoff single and a stolen base. The Canes watch three set down in a row by Reynolds. They do not score, so we played an inning. It's the Jackets in front of the Canes, 2-0 in a perfect game, game of the week.